Assalamu alaikum and very good day to all of you. Okay, today's session we're going to learn new topics which is mass transfer in gas diffusion. Okay, so in a, all the chapter before, we learned about the heat transfer. The heat transfer is governed by the difference in temperature. But for mass transfer, it is governed by the difference in concentration. Okay. So, let's begin this chapter with the mass transfer in gas diffusion. Alright, under the topics of gas diffusion, we have two subtopics, which is the first one is we need to determine the rate of flux distribution. What does it mean by the rate of flux distribution? The rates of flux distribution mean we will determine how fast is the gas transfer from point 1 to point 2. Okay, for the rate of gas diffusion, okay, before we can determine uh, the rate of gas diffusion, okay, we must we should know first what types of mechanism happen, whether it is equimolar counter diffusion or it is a kind of a mechanism that we call A diffusing through stagnant non diffusing B. Okay, so the best way to explain these two types of mechanism is through the diagram that I will explain later in the next slide. Okay, before we go further, we need to understand first what is the fixed law for gas, the basic concept in mass transfer for gas diffusion. Okay. In the heat transfer, the gas transfer happened because there is a difference in temperature. So the, gas, uh, the heat transfer due to the uh, difference in temperature and heat will transfer from high to low. In mass transfer, okay, for example, diffusion of gas A from point 1 to point 2, the driving force for this mechanism to happen is actually due to the difference in concentration. So let's say, let's have a look at this one. We have CA1, the concentration of A at point 1, and CA2. So the concentration of gas A at point 1 is higher compared to concentration of gas A at point 2. Due to the difference in concentration, the gas will transfer and this is where we call it flux diffusion okay from point one to point two it's quite similar to the heat transfer where heat transfer for heat it transfer from high temperature to low temperature okay sorry low temperature but for mass is from high concentration to low concentration okay so this is the basic equation for flux diffusion okay the J terms here is referred as flux. Okay. Let's say we have diffusion, we have molecular A transfer from point 1 to point 2. So CA2, sorry, CA1 minus CA2 is actually referred to the difference in concentration between these two points. So delta C between point one and point two okay 
And the distance z2 minus z1 here is actually the term that we divide it here. Right? And lastly, the dAB is actually the diffusion coefficient. So, this equation, we derive it in terms of concentration. The difference is concentration. We can also rewrite the equation in terms of pressure. Okay, so how? We can use this equation, which is the ideal gas equation, PV over NRT. R is a gas constant and T is a, is a temperature. Okay, so C here, we can convert into P term by divided with the R and T, the gas constant and the temperature. So, the equation can be rewrite into the pressure difference term here, delta P. Okay. So, if you notice that, there are quite difference between equation 1 and equation 2. So, what is the difference? Let's have a look. In this equation, equation 1, we didn't have the R and T term, okay? But here, we have this R and T term, which is R referred to gas constants and T is referred to the temperature, okay? So, the R is depends on the unit for the uh, flux that we want to measure. Okay, so all the units for the, oh, sorry, all the value of R at different unit is listed in the appendix. Okay, let's understand the part of Ikumolar counter diffusion in gases. Have a look at this diagram. Okay. We have two different points, which is point one and point two. At point one, we have gas A and gas B. And we also have the same gas at point 2. But according to the pressure profile, okay, there are pressure difference. Remember in the previous part, I already explained the mass transfer is also governed by the difference in pressure. Okay, so for Gas A, it has higher pressure at point 1. So, when it has higher pressure at point 1, the mass transfer will occur from point 1 to point 2. The gas diffusion. Okay. How about the gas B? So, based on the uh, pressure profile here, okay. The gas B, uh, the gas diffusion for B occur in different direction. Okay, why? Because the pressure of B is higher at point 2 compared to point 1. That's why the direction of the flux for gas B is different or opposite compared to direction of flux uh, of A. Okay, in previous slide, we already understand what is the equimolar counter diffusion in gases. So, now we will learn how can we write the equation or how can we relate the equation of diffusion between these two types of uh, gas. So, according to the, the diagram here, we can see that the rate of diffusion or flux for gas A is actually opposite to gas B. Okay, so therefore, we can write that G... AZ. AZ notation here is actually the A move along the Z, the distance. Okay. It's at equals to minus JBZ. Why it is minus? is because of the 
direction is opposite. Okay. So the total concentration of gas at one point uh, is actually consists of A plus B. So CA plus CB. Okay. Same goes to the difference or the change in uh, gas concentration for A and for B. It's just the difference is only the minus direction here because it's occur again is because it's occur in opposite direction. Okay. So if we look at the basic equation for the mass transfer, okay. The rate of mass transfer for gas A along the z distance is actually minus mass transfer for gas B. Okay. So, again, we can write the equation as well in pressure term. And we can also have one conclusion from this equation whereby the DAB should be equals to the DBE. Right? Alright, here we have the data for diffusivity coefficient of gases. Okay, quite a number of uh, gas here. Okay. So, the only thing that you should remember here is we mentioned before that the DAB is, should be the same as DBA. So, it doesn't matter whether you want to measure the flux of gas A or the flux of gas B. The value for diffusion coefficient for DAB or DBA is still the same. The only things that you should be careful is the temperature. So based on the condition, if that things happen, for example, the diffusion happen at the 10, sorry, 0 degrees C, so the value is here. But if it's happened at 42 degrees C, here is the value. Okay? Just be careful with the condition. Okay, it's time to do example for accumulated counter diffusion in gases. Let's uh, have a look at the question. It's about diffusion of gas A diffusing through a uniform tube, which is, this one is referred to Z, okay, containing N2 as gas B at this pressure and temperature 29K. At point A, it consists of PA1 at this pressure and PA2 at this pressure. With the diffusivity is given, so you need to calculate what is the flux for JA, the diffusion of gas A, and repeat the same procedure to measure the diffusion for gas B. based on the equation uh, in the previous slide. Okay, so we need to find uh, JA, the diffusion of gas A. Okay, what's the first step that you need to do? Okay, first, need to list down the input info. Remember the info that I 
uh, underline. Okay, so you have to put it in a table like this. Okay. Okay, so we have gas A and gas B, gas A as ammonia and gas B as nitrogen. Okay, so we have the distance here in meter unit and temperature. Uh, here, this is the important part yet you shouldn't be remembered. Okay, I suggest that every time you do a question, you need to solve the question, you need to have this table. Okay, first, you need to have point 0.1 and point 0.2. Okay, where the gas, the pressure for gas A at point 0.1 is 1.1. 1 .1 for a 4 and pressure for gas A at point 2 as is 5.07 10 to the power of 3 and the diffusion coefficient is given and R okay the constant for R of course uh, according to the unit available for diffusivity the pressure unit so we choose to use the R at this unit okay so what's next Okay, next step is we check the equation parameters. Do we have all the parameters needed in the equation? Okay, so what is the equation? Okay, we have this flux equation for A. Because the info, the info here is available in pressure different. So that's why we use this equation. Okay, so now let's check. Let's check the information. Do we have the distance? That's A1 minus that's A2. Yes, 0 0.1. How about R and T? Yes, T is 298 and R8314. And PA1? Yes, PA2? Yes, and DAB? Yes. So, can we solve the question? Yes. There you go. We got it. This is the answer. Don't forget the unit. Okay. For the units, it is very important for you to check that every single unit that you use uh, in the info here. So, at the end, you have to make sure that the J that you get here is equal to this unit okay so whatever the input equation that you replace or the substitute into equation must result in the final unit as it is okay so we now solve question b which is you need to find what is the flux for gas p okay the same procedure we have to list down all the info that we got in the question, okay? But remember that we want to determine the value of flux B. However, the, the information about gas B is not available here. We only have the gas A. Why we need the information about gas B? Because of course, we want to determine the uh, diffusion for gas B. Therefore, we need the info about the pressure difference for gas B. Yeah? Okay. How about the other info? Okay. So, we already have R, T, Z2, and minus Z1, and DAB. Still same procedure as we did in A. However, the, the value for PB1 and PB2, we didn't have it, okay? But we can calculate the value of PB1 on, and PB2 based on the equation, okay? This equation, PB1, which is uh, equals to P total minus PA1, and PB2 is minus, uh, P total minus PA2. So, PA1 and PA, PA2, we already have the info here, which is, this is the PA1, yeah, and 
P82 is here. Okay. So, we just need to substitute the value of P, B1 and PB2 into the same equation that we use in. Uh, okay, so first we need to uh, determine the value of PB1 and PB2 by using the info of PA1 and PA2 from the question. Okay, so we remember that PB1 equation from the previous slides is P total minus PA1 and PB2, P total minus PA2. Okay, so remember this is the info that... Uh, we got from question so this is our input info okay so we're gonna use the value of p a1 and p a2 here so p a1 and p a2 info will be used to get p b1 and p b2 okay there we are okay so knowing that the Total pressure uh, is 1.01 uh, 10 to the power of 5. Okay, so just substitute the equation, then you get the PB1. And PB2 here. Okay. As you can see, the value for PB2 is slightly higher compared to the value in PB1. So that's the reason why the flux direction is opposite to the flux A. Okay, next, same procedure. We just substitute, substitute all the info inside into the equation. Okay, so we already have the info, the AB, RT, Z2 minus Z1, and also the PB2. Uh, to PB1 minus PB2 in which that you can get it from here. Okay. And lastly, just substitute into the equation then you get the flux value for B. See, the value is minus. Okay. So, if you can see here, I determine first the pressure difference. So, it will be easier for me to substitute into the equation here. Okay. Before I get the value of J by using this equation. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, that's all for part one. We'll see you back in part two. Bye!